Um, hello, my name is Dimitri Gaskin, and I am talking about growing up in the Drupal community. So, actually, I've sort of revised the name because you know some people grow up French, or some people American, some people Australian, but I grew up Drupal. <laughs> so, I'm going to sort of share the things I've learned in growing up Drupal. First, I, I just want to get sort of a survey. How many people here are can consider themselves contributors to Drupal? Not so many. Awesome. So that means we're going to make the rest of you contributors. Um, how many people are coders? Sort of 50% maybe? All right. Great. Um, so how many people consider themselves just beginners? Just a few. How many people ninjas? <laughs> also just a few. So again, the rest of you are in between. Great. So I'm going to talk about how I went from being a beginner to a ninja and how, you know, wherever you are along that path, how you can come closer to ninja-ness. And then, you know, <laughs> how can you, you know, be an active member of the Drupal community and then, you know, what sort of makes the Drupal community tick. And so, but first I'll start out, you know, what it's like to grow up Drupal. So, I wasn't born Drupal. I started out programming in Java was my first language. When I was eight, I really loved robots. And so one of my best friend, his dad took me and my best friend to a robot exhibition one day. And he, and you know, I, I, I really wanted to make a robot. So I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to find the simplest robot I can and I'm going to make the same, I'm going to try to replicate it. And then, you know, I can go off from there. So I found this robot. It looked something like this. It was made out of Legos. I thought, you know, oh, Legos, I, I could do that. And I asked them, you know, what is it programmed in? And they said, it, it's done in Java. So, okay, you know, eight-year-old needs to learn Java. <laughs> so I, I went to my parents and I said, hey, I, I want to learn Java. And they're not programmers. What do they know? But they, they looked for a book on Java and they found this book, Beginning Programming with Java for Dummies. <laughs> and so that, this is how I got my start into programming. Is, you know, this, so my, my mom went out and got this book for me and she, what she would do is she would stay up late reading it every night and <laughs> she would try to teach me the next morning. <laughs> the, the thing is, after about four or five days, I, I got ahead of her and I started teaching her about Java and that's sort of my first, that was sort of my first indication like, you know, maybe I'm going to be a programmer. So there, there was a time when she was still debugging my programs. But that, that ended pretty quickly. So, you know, but then after I finished the book, you know, what is an eight-year-old program? I, uh, so my very first program was, you, know, would, uh, you, would, you would tell it the weather and it would tell you what to wear that day. You know, this is a complicated problem for an eight-year-old. So uh, maybe it wouldn't work so well in Melbourne here, but <laughs> it worked well where, where I live. So, you know, that's how, that was my f sort of entry into programming is with Java. So, you know, well, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that to those of you non-programmers, if you want to get into programming. W what I can say is, you know, start, take something that you're passionate about and approach it like you're eight. You know, start simple and try to, try to make the simplest thing you can while still, you know, making something that, that works. Even if it's, all, it's, all it does is, you know, tell you to wear shorts when it's warm out. All right. Um, my toddler years of Drupal. So, um, in 2005, when I was 10, that's fourth grade, my school had a website, but they needed a system to manage their content. So what did they need to download? Drupal. Yes. All right. For those of you that don't know, those are the, some of the lyrics to the Drupal song. Um, so the tech committee at school, which actually my best friend's dad was on, somehow had heard of this Drupal thing. And they, you know, they also needed someone to build, to build them a new website. So I don't know sort of what gave them the idea to ask me because I was this 10-year-old who just barely knew how to program. But they did. And so, and they said, hey, you know, here, go off. Use that Drupal thing, whatever. And I had, I, you know, checked it out. And I had absolutely no clue what it did or how to use it or anything. But sort of little by little, I was starting to figure things out. And what I found really helpful was I went to the forums and I started asking some questions. And, you know, they say that there are no stupid questions, but I look back on these and 
and that saying is wrong. <laughs> so here's my, here's my first question. What is a module and how do you make one? And of course, the answer is right in the handbook as, as the commenter politely points out. But yeah, this was back to you know, February 11, 2006. This is in uh, 4.6 days, uh, a long time ago. So, you know, the thing is, I asked maybe 20 questions like this, and what was really amazing to me was that people took me seriously. And they actually went through and answered my questions. And, you know, it's funny, but it, it's true. They didn't know that I was 10 years old. They thought, you know, oh, just some guy wondering about Drupal, you know, and, and they answered me. So. I kept doing this and I kept, you know, looking at the forums until one day I found, you know, something really cool happened where I saw this one question and I thought, oh, I know the answer to that question. And that's, you know, this question right here. Um, so this is the very first question that I answered on the forums. And that was sort of my turning point in Drupal where I went from, you know, just taking stuff from the community to, be able to being able to give back and I thought, you know, these people are helping me out for free, just answering my questions. I should do the same for them. And it also, you know, it was very encouraging that, you know, I'm getting better at this and I can now help other people. So if any of you here have installed Drupal, you're doing like 10 times better than tens of thousands of people. So if any of you have in even gotten Drupal installed, you should go to the forums and there's a whole forum for people who can't install it. So you, you can really build, you can help a lot. So eventually, you know, I went on and I actually finished the website and it looked like that. Um, this is, yeah, it's, it's no longer online and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Considering, you know, it was one of those crazy 4.7 sites with block PHP and it, it was bad, trust me. <laughs> so, but you know, I was becoming Drupal. And how did it start? Well, I, I asked stupid questions. That's how it started. And you know, people, that's, like, if you ask stupid questions, that'll give something for other people to answer. So, you, you know, ask, ask the, the best questions you can, and they don't have to be great questions, but, you know, it sort of sounds overused, but by, uh, by uh, helping others, you also help yourself. So, you know, I helped others with their questions, and they helped me with their question, or with my questions. So, you know, I was getting more and more engaged in the community, and I, I, I uh, was becoming a better programmer at the same time. So I downloaded the latest version of Drupal. At that time, it was Drupal 4.8, which we now know as Drupal 5. And I, I tried to you know, install it, and it didn't work. You know, if at, a time, at a certain point in Drupal, Drupal 5 development, if you just went to the, the home page and you hadn't installed it, it would just give you this big error. And that was it. So I thought, you know, well, we have this nice new installer. Why not point people to the installer after you, know, you visit the home page and it's, there's nothing installed? So that was my first patch is, oh, I call this part childhood. Um, it looked like this. And if any of you are programmers, you can see that this is very bad code. <laughs> see, if it, if it, when it installs it, it makes a new PHP file in the includes directory <laughs> that's empty. Um, so, you know, you've got to start somewhere. And again, you know, it's a dumb patch, but people took me seriously and they gave me feedback on it. And of course, it ended up not getting accepted because it was so poorly written. But at the time, it was the best I could do. So, you know, I, I felt really proud of myself there. And, you know, so I, I uh, this was in, I think, February of 2006 or, yeah, no. That was my forum post. This was, I think, in, in March of 2007. And so I was, you know, sort of becoming more and more involved in the community. So I, I learned how to code, and I was, you know, trying to give back code to others. So I also tried some other patches that also failed. And finally, in May of 2007, I was only 11 years old. My first patch was accepted. And this is, in all its glory, my first patch. Um, all right. So, you know, while that other patch was rejected, I didn't really take it to heart. I was 11 years old. So, of course, you know, I'd rather it accepted, but, you know, I was just doing it for fun, so it didn't even matter. And that's what, you know, I think really makes us go, is the fun. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. 
All right, the identity crisis. So in March of 2007, there was a DrupalCon in Sunnyvale, and that's about an hour driving from where I live. So that's you know, pretty close by compared to the other DrupalCons which I have to fly to. So I really wanted to go and meet all these people that I had met virtually, but you know, I never told anybody my age and all these online things. It was, I was always behind this sort of barrier of anonymity. And so I thought, you know, if people find out I'm so young, they might not take me seriously anymore. So at the same time, I was getting involved in this really cool project called the Drupal Dojo. How many of you here know about that? Not so many. All right, well, you, you should find out. In fact, I'll tell you about it. So this was sort of the original dojo. Now it's in its second incarnation. So there's this guy, um, Josh Koenig, who works for a Drupal company in San Francisco called Chapter 3. And he led this, uh, what it was is every Sunday morning, people would give a lecture and, it, and broadcast their screen online and, and their voice. And they would give a lecture about Drupal for like an hour. And then they'd take questions and, and you know, answer those questions. So I would start, basically, you know, I would just attend these, lec attend these lectures. And I was really, like, that was a really awesome way to learn Drupal. And those are still around. You can still find those. I highly recommend those for learning Drupal. But I also, you know, got involved with the community there. And I started wanting to make my own lecture. Oh, here's a picture from the Drupal Dojo. It's no longer available, so we're parts of it. So th this was sort of the spirit. With, we had lots of cool art. and. The, the new dojo looks, looks different, but the old dojo is no longer online, unfortunately, but the videos are. All right, so I was, I was afraid of revealing my identity to people, so I came up with a solution, which was, I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna try to record a video, but I'll tell them my microphone is broken, so they can only see me typing text. So here's a video that I recorded for the Drupal Dojo. So it looks like this, and you know, I go on to talk about and give examples in code. You know, uh, let's get started. All right, so you know, doing code, doing Drupal. Oh, yeah. So that you know, that that was like a lecture that I would give give for the Drupal Dojo. It's about three minutes long, and I made made a whole series of these about the different hooks in Drupal. So. You know, the first time I did it, I was pretty nervous, but I, I thought I came up with a pretty good solution. And I did it, you know, more, I did it probably five or six times, and after, you know, a couple of weeks of text-based lectures, nobody ever even, you know, questioned how much I knew about Drupal, um, nor my microphone. <laughs> so I think that that's sort of a really important part of Drupal and of, you know, being online in general is this aspect of anonymity and the possibility of anonymity. So, you know, of course, there are lots of problems with it. Be, you know, things like people could post, you know, malicious comments under different names and try to hurt other people without having to take responsibility for it. And that's a really big problem with anonymity. But at the same time, you know, like the Drupal community and all sorts of places online have really embraced it. And that's, I think it's really important because if you have something to hide, like I did, and that, but you know, it's not gonna hurt anybody, it's, it's really important to, you, to allow you to do that. So, you know, in the, there's this cartoon, I don't know if you can read the caption, it says, on the internet, no one knows you're a dog. From, this is from a couple of years ago. And I think that this is sort of really representative of what, you know, what the anonymity is. And on the internet also, no one knows you're 11, or no one knows you're not a, a you don't have a computer science degree or anything like that. So. In a sense, Drupal sort of really embraces that, and we, opposite, uh, we operate as sort of the opposite of a meritocracy. So a meritocracy is sort of a system of ruling in which the people who are the most educated make, make the decisions. And in Drupal, we call it a duocracy. That is, the doers get you know, the most credit. So, duocracy. <laughs> and that's sort of the spirit. Like, if you want to make a change, you should go do it, because nobody else is going to do it for you. You can't you know, use your, you know, computer science degree to go other, order other people's, people around to do it. So that has sort of really powerful implications because, you know, when I, when I was uh, submitting my first patch, no one checked, you know, does this guy have a computer science degree? Okay, he doesn't, let's, you know, ignore his patch. Everybody's looking, looked at equals, they're only judged based on how they contribute. So, 
also, you can look at it this way, you know, if you want to be viewed well in the eyes of the community, write some patches. Just do it. Um, or it also works for companies too. You know, if you want your, com your Drupal company to be sort of recognized in the community, just write some patches and say, you know, this was on time and sponsored by the community. And that will really, really get sort of get you v viewed well in the eyes of the community. And people are going to look upon you well for contributing patches because that's our attitude is you're, you're judged based on how you contribute to the community. But also you can, you know, for back to the individual, you can sort of test things out and, you know, you can ask stupid questions with no one blaming you for it because, you know, everybody's viewed as equal. And I responded to questions that, you know, made me, view, that made me, uh, sorry, people look better upon me. So also, anonymity gave me the, the chance to become a, sort of this part of this greater community that is the Drupal community. And, you know, they might not have accepted me if they, when I was just starting out, if they knew, oh, he's just some silly 10-year-old trying to, I don't know what. So, it all, you know, it, it creates plenty of opportunity that way to, f to find a community. So, I was able to find this community of people who didn't care what my age was or didn't care that I didn't have a computer science degree as long as I just did it. So, coming of age. In August 2007, I felt ready. I was 11, and I, I want, went to try my first local Drupal user group. How many of you have been to one of those Drupal user groups? All right, a fair number, great. Awesomest way to get involved in the Drupal community. So I was, I was a little nervous, but you know, I, I had become known online. I had written, written a couple of modules and contributed them, written patches for core at that point. So I thought, you know, okay, you know, I have some Drupal cred and I'll try to you know, go to this meetup and meet these people in person. So I, I went to our Dr local Berkeley user group, Berkeley Drupal user group, and I introduced myself to some people who I had known online. And it was a really amazing feeling to finally like, put a name to, to a face. So if any of you know Derek Wright, Tao Starbo, these, like I met these people at my very first Drupal meetup, and they were amazed that you know, it's just some 12-year-old kid behind Dimitri G01. And, you know, they, everybody was assuming like, oh, you're, you know, Dimitri G01, some like 30 year old Russian hacker, whatever. <laughs> and here I was, you know, 12 years old, very, very little. Um, and, and, oh, here's the Drupal user group. This is a more recent picture. Um, in September of 2009, wait, 2007. Now I'm getting confused. Yeah, okay, in September, I was, became a member of the Drupal security team, which also felt like a huge honor. So for those of you who don't know what that is, basically whenever something, somebody finds something insecure in Drupal, they report it to the security team. And if you find something insecure, you should do that too. And then the security team sort of keeps that under wraps and comes up with a fix. And then every, when, I'm sorry, every Wednesday morning, they send out all the fixes for the week. So, you know, it's a pretty big, responsibility and a pretty big honor and they were people were really trusting me um, to you know not give away the secrets that you know could potentially exploit thousands of Drupal sites so the next month was the Bay Area Drupal camp and so that's actually the largest uh, Drupal camp that we know of um, and well at this point it's become but we've had it every year since 2007 and in 2007, I proposed three talks that were all accepted. And so that was my real sort of coming out into the community as a 12-year-old. So I talked about, you know, what is CCK? My talk story, what is CCK? What is views? And how to do theming? And so with each talk, I sort of gained more confidence. And that was my, also, you know, my first entry into public speaking. But I, I viewed it like more, you know, becoming bi a bigger part of the community. And so, at, in, at my third, by my third talk, the room was like totally packed, and people were out the door, listening to what is theming. And so now, you know, the cat was out of the bag. Dimitri user one is twelve. So some people still didn't believe it. Uh, the one of the uh, sort of highest regarded Drupal programmers, and I'll tell you, he's highest regarded because he has a ton of contributions. His name is CHX. He he didn't believe me. He thought there's no way this kid could be twelve. 
So he said, you know, he has to meet me in person to, to verify. <laughs> oh, this is uh, me at Bad Camp. So yeah, no, no way, no way that could be possible. Um, so the following spring was DrupalCon Boston. That was my first DrupalCon. Here is me around a table with other programmers. <laughs> um, there, if uh, around this table, that's from the left. That's Earl Miles. He wrote the Views module. Then me. Then uh, Larry Garfield, who I don't, he did a lot of stuff. And Chris Vanderwater. Um, you know, all Drupal contributors. So this is this is my first DrupalCon in Boston, and it was just such a cool feeling to meet all these people like Earl Miles, Larry Garfield, and Chris, who I had met online. And you know, it was such a cool feeling to finally be able to meet them in person. And I don't need to sell you on how cool that is because you all are here today at a Drupal camp. Um, so I got to take a week off of school for that, which is also very cool. Um, so I, all, I you know, I, I kept coding. I kept coding. Here's me. This was at DrupalCon Boston. I gave a talk about jQuery, and then they're asking a question, is John Resig, the author of jQuery. <laughs> no, uh, maybe. I look pretty tall there, actually. So, and I was, I was a short kid. Um, so in DrupalCon DC, 2009, I also gave a talk there. And there I met the folks at this awesome, awesome company called Development Seed, which it was a Drupal shop. They are no longer, but that's a longer story that's not really important. Um, they, they are a, a Drupal shop, or were a Drupal shop, that did a lot of really, really cool work. How many people here know about Open Atrium? All right. So for those who don't, Open Atrium is sort of a, an intranet built in Drupal. In a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, here's me in DC. And I, uh, I met these folks, and they're really cool people. And I saw this product. This was like the first real Drupal distribution. And I thought, you know, that's really, it's really big for the community and it's really big for Drupal. How can I sort of get my fingers into that and how can I become a part of this? Um, this is a picture of Open Atrium when you install it. So I wrote this uh, module called, or extension called DrushMake, um, which what it does is it's sort of a packaging utility for Drupal distributions where a dr distribution is basically like, a bunch of modules gathered together to build a piece of software like a, an intranet. So what Drush Make does is it'll, you know, you run the command and it'll go out and fetch all the modules and assemble them together into one directory. And that's all it does. I mean, but it, it gets pretty complicated with, you know, translations and themes and all that stuff. But I thought, you know, bec this was a problem I saw basically that they were having that I could fix. And so that was sort of my, that was, yeah, I wanted to really become a part of what is a distribution? Like, I wanted my name to be associated with that. So that's, that's how I did it. And within a few months, you know, they started using it. And it was really gratifying to have a key component of Open Atrium that I wrote. So um, I actually, then they went on and they, you know, they flew me out to DC one time, or twice, actually, to work for them. And oh, here's Drushmake. Um, yeah. And we, we came up with something completely different. This is a software that we, that I, we wrote in DC. This is called TileMill. Um, and this is sort of, they've sort of shifted focus now to more on mapping. And I was also a part of that. I wrote the first version of this software. Basically what it is, is it's the CSS-like language that designs a map. And you, know, you can do something like change the color of the background and save. Oops. And it changes. So it's, it's a map design toolkit, but that's what they do now. And I, you know, I became a part of, oops. And so that's, that's sort of how I, you know, basically once, once I got my hands into that, then the opportunities just kept on growing. All right, adulthood. I can't, it's you know, hard to talk about adulthood because I'm still in high school, but I, I will talk about my Drupal adulthood. So, for me, you know, mo well, most people, they learn their values and what they believe from, you know, their friends and their parents mostly. For me, it was Drupal is where I got a lot of my values and, you know, what I find important. And not to say that there aren't my friends. I mean, I guess it is from my friends in Drupal. But so what I've, I've learned sort of a lot of things from being part of the Drupal community. 
So what I, one thing that was really big is you know work together, and even if you're on opposite sides of you know an issue, like you you think opposite things. If for example, if it's about the software, like if we have a disagreement, we're not just going to try to settle that disagreement. We're going to argue that disagreement out because everybody wants to make the software better, and ultimately, so that's our you know ultimate goal. And everybody thinks they have the right solution, so they're going to argue for that solution. So you know that might seem to create you know like a big war in Drupal, but no, it's actually it's the opposite. Everybody wants to work towards the same goal of making Drupal better. So I also learned duocracy is really powerful. You know, it's when people are judged based on how they contribute, how much they contribute, instead of their credentials. You know, really amazing things are possible. Like you know, a twelve-year-old becoming a big part of the community. Um, and then, so community is key. Like without community, there couldn't be any of this. You know, without a Drupal community, none of you would be here. So, also, you know, I think it was really important that I, at least to my journey into Drupal, that I was really young when I was doing it, because you know, when I started, I had the mind of an eight-year-old because I was an eight-year-old. But you know, start simple. So if you want to learn more Drupal. The best thing I can recommend is try to do something simple with it. Don't don't try to build you know, the don't don't build open atrium like a big intranet. Just build a simple site and then build a slightly more complicated site and go up from there. You can think of the forums as a playground. So you know the forums are still in Drupal.org today. They're still great a great resource. Um, think of them as like a playground. You know, you can you can ask questions. Nobody's really going to question you. And then you can help help and start to answer questions and. That's how you can sort of build up your knowledge in Drupal, and uh, also IRC. It's a you know basically big group chat for Drupal. You can do the same thing there. There are plenty of people asking questions about Drupal. There are people who don't even know how to install Drupal. So as I said, you know if you can install Drupal, you're like 20 steps ahead of of 90% of other people. Okay, like all annoying kids, look for the problems, and then you know seek out the loopholes and find the things that don't work well. And once you do that. Then don't only do that and say, "All right, I found a problem. Hey, here's a problem. Go out and fix it," because that's what really will get you recognized in the community. So, you know, even if you have the mindset of the kid of a kid, no one else is going to come do it for you. If you if you have a way that you want to make Drupal better, you're the best person to make it better. And you know, when you when something you do doesn't work out, maybe you you write a patch and people don't like it because you know not because of you, of course, but because your patch isn't good. Then just you know keep going and and um, don't get discouraged. Don't you know sink your ego into it. It's just a patch. It's just lines of code. Um, think of you know think of a kid who's grown up like me in the digital age. So inventors you know tried to work out things by wait yeah. So traditionally people worked out worked things out. In inventors were very solitary people and they just tried to. Work, work things out themselves, but now you know we have all these online communities. We, there's lots of collaboration. Um, you know, you can you can work together to solve a problem, and it's almost surely going to get you a better solution than if you worked alone. And I think that's uh, brings me to the final part of my talk, which is what makes the Drupal community tick, and why are we such a great community? So. And also, you know, why become part of the Drupal community? So, there was a, a study done, I think, at MIT, uh, about why do programmers contribute to open source? Because, like, it seems to very illogical. Why would you give away your code for free, and you know, and help other people for free? But so they they found a couple of, of reasons. Um, the biggest one was fun. You know, some of you here. Maybe a lot of you might be skeptical. Like, is it really fun to write code all day? But I can tell you, first of all, it is fun to write code all day. And second of all, it's even more fun when you have this community behind you who recognizes you for the code you do. So that's why I think a lot of people contribute. To, and this is what they found for uh, at MIT. So clearly, it's right. This is why this is why a lot of people contribute to open source. Is because you know, it's it's really fun, and it's fun to see your contributions used. Like you know, I wrote. Like maybe 15 lines in Drupal 6, and that's running on whitehouse.gov. 
So it's, it's just a cool feeling. Like, I have my 15 lines of code, and thousands of other people have their 15 lines of code in there, too. So it, like, it feel, it's really gratifying. And you know, our culture is becoming more and more about consuming. Like, you know, there's TV and Facebook. But who wants to you know, just sit around all day and watch TV and consume content? It's so much more fun to make content yourself and then to see other people using what you make and even better, building on what you make and, and you know, you have this back and forth. So another thing they found was this back and forth, they found community. They found that programmers are, you know, they, they want to create something that more people will benefit from. So if you can see like, you know, who, okay, who here has used Drush Make? Like, look at, look at that. These are people who have used my code and like my code. So it's, it's a cool feeling to see, to see this many hands go up. And you know, you guys, you write your modules and you ask that question and you'll see some hands go up too. Um, so the cool thing about Drupal is you don't have to grow, grow up Drupal when you're eight or nine. I mean, you can, you can learn to use Drupal and become part of the community at any age. And so Drupal, you know, it's like, it's, it's like my family almost. It's, it's like an extended family. And so Drupal cons, they're like family reunions. Um, not the bad ones though. They're like good family reunions. <laughs> and so that's, and then, and the, so that's my sort of feeling of why the community is so great. And further, the community is what makes it fun. Because, you know, I go to these Drupal cons and it's just like the greatest thing to twice a year or whatever, however many times a year, you know, this year probably more because I'm coming here, which is awesome. Um, you know, I get to finally see these people who I've met online plenty of times and I see them in person and collaboration, collaborate in person. So, we, uh, Drupal sort of recently has adopted this slogan, come for the software, stay for the community. And you can talk to Dries about that. I think it's an awesome slogan. He's coming later today. Um, so in 1995, this guy named Scott Page did an experiment and he did, gave two groups of people a, a very complex problem. And I tried to look up what the problem was, but I could not find it. The first one was from a bunch of people from what's called the Mensa group, which is the high IQ society. So very smart, probably very snotty people. And then <laughs> the rest were like um, university professors from all different departments. And so what he found, I, again, I don't know what problem this was, so I don't know how like, good this result is, but it, what he found is that time and time again, like the, the professors would always, you know, they're probably pretty smart people too, but they're not from the high IQ society. Um, what he found is that they consistently got this problem right and they got it right more of the time. And the reason that was is because everybody had a different perspective on it and since they were all from different departments, they all had something different to bring to the table. And so I think that's what's really, what's really drives the Drupal community and what makes it so great. Uh, like one thing, one way that we can incorporate all of you, no matter if you're a coder or you're a designer or what you do, is that uh, sort of diversity helped solve this problem, helped solve these problems. And having all different people coming at it from all different angles is, you know, what, what got these done, not just having the, the smartest geniuses in the room all try to sit down and work it out together. Um, because, you know, Drupal might seem like it's, you know, a bunch of geniuses all trying to, you know, out genius each other, but that's really not what it is. It's all about, you know, everybody's contributing in their own way, however they can. And so, if, even if you're not a coder, you know, there are a, a million ways that you can contribute. Just, you know, as I said, and I keep saying, if you install Drupal, you're like 20 steps ahead of the game. So you, you can contribute that, you can tell other you can help other people install Drupal. So clearly Drupal is a community of, it's, it's more like these professors than these high IQ people. And I think you can all, all of you can, can bring something to that community. So, one, another place we see this is, you know, crowdsourcing has a, a similar idea of having a lot of people from a, different, from a lot of, you know, different walks of life, different professions, working together to the, towards the same thing. And that's what, um, sort of, that's what Drupal is. So, uh, just to finish up, uh, all you need is love. The best person to do, it, to do a job is someone who loves what they're doing. So, that's why I like and I, that's why, you know, why I do Drupal is because I love it. And that's why a lot of, you know, big companies don't, don't, or, you know, a lot of them do well, but 
a lot of them don't, and it's because people don't really care. But the, the great thing about the Drupal community is it's a community of people who care and people who love it, and that's why the Drupal community keeps going on. And so it, it, I think it all comes, sort of comes from this slogan, come for the software, stay for the community. So I came for the, so me, I came for the software, you know, because this tech committee at school pointed out, hey, why don't you go like, play with this Drupal thing? But I stayed for the community, you know, I saw that I started out asking questions, answering questions, I started contributing modules, and I saw people recognize what I did and use what I did, so I stayed for the community. And then even more, you know, I started, and then I you know, went on to Badcamp and DrupalCon, Badcamp, by the way, Bay Area Drupal Camp. Um, and so I think Drupal has done you know, an amazing opportunity um, of allowing me to, or given me the amazing opportunity of allowing to connect with so many people from so many different walks of life. And I think that's what's really important to Drupal. So, you know, the more we love it, the better it'll be. And so I just wanted to finish up by saying thank you very much for having me here. And this is what the Drupal community do, it can do, is it can, you know, bring me here. And maybe it can bring you here next year. So thank you so much. And thank you especially Brian, Donna, Jane, and Peter, who's not here. Thank you. Oh, and questions if you want them. Oh, I'll, I'll just, this is a small token of appreciation. Oh, <laughs> something. Chocolate. something. Chocolate. Chocolate. I love chocolate. I know that. <laughs> this is, by the way, a big Drupal thing, chocolate. You know, if you bring chocolate to your Drupal meetup, you'll be like the greatest person ever. <laughs> that's, that's one way you can contribute, even if you're not a coder. <laughs> All right, so have we got time? We have got time for a couple of questions. Yep. Has anyone, I'll run around with the microphone. Or oh, people come up. Yes, we'll have a party meeting. There's not one over the other side. That's all. Questions? No questions. I answered all your questions. No, except for one. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, you're going to work in programming career. Where are you headed next? Like, how much you got to go to high school and? Um, I have. And I have like a year and a half left of high school, and then you know. So clearly, I can always turn to programming if I yeah, yeah. if I want to do something in the future. So I figure, you know, I want to go to university and learn something new, and okay. yeah. you know, branch out and maybe use that new knowledge to help me program better, or I don't know what. So what sort of stuff? Here? What do you? Don't I, I, I don't know. I decided too early. Yeah. <laughs> Not I'm the right question to ask someone in front of the hospital. What do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I want to do when I grow yeah, up? That's right. <laughs> Drupal. Come up, come up to the microphone so we can hear your questions. Oi, I'll run, I'll run. I just want to know if your mum's still coding. Uh, no. <laughs> she, oh, she, I forgot to say, she's actually like, she's a, a professor by, or like teacher, professor. She studies comparative literature. Is, uh, what she, and now she's actually, She's a project manager at my parents' company, which is a very small business that I that that uses Drupal because of me. They they're a small yeah. My my dad he's a designer, and so that's sort of I think why they chose me is because my dad's a designer, and so he knew like a web designer, so he knew a lot of web people, um, and so that if he fit you know if he's a designer, I could probably pro I don't know, but actually my dad and I work together now, and it's a pretty cool collaboration because you know he does the design, I do the programming, and it's all at home. Dimitri, are you, I remember looking on YouTube, some of the tutorials that are on there, and I remember looking back and thinking, who's this stupid little nine-year-old kid, yabba, yabba, yabba? <laughs> Was that you on those, some of those tutorials on YouTube um, that you've, from a way back? Because, boy, probably. I'm impressed you've grown up. <laughs> well um, done. Probably. I, I don't know. There. And I, I must admit, I didn't look at them. I thought, oh, geez. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, growing up happens at the best of us. <laughs> How did actually did you learn to program? Because first, uh, you uh, uh, submitted those patches; they were rejected. Uh, uh, you improved quite a bit. Did you do that by reading uh, other people's codes, uh, reading books, chatting to people? How actually? Yeah, I mean, became, it was. Uh, a it, good was all, it was all self-taught. Like you know, I started programming with Java. And then from, from Java to PHP, like, it's, a, it's somewhat of a jump, but, you know, I read, yeah, like, I basically what I did was, you know, 
I wanted to make, you know, I saw like one little change, like maybe I wanted to change something in the theme and I wanted to write, you know, so I needed to write one line of code to, for that. So I looked it up and then, you know, I wanted to change something else. So I needed to write two lines of code and slowly I just, slowly I just became a programmer. Like I learned PHP basically like the way it was written. It's a pile of packs. Uh, hi, Dimitri. Uh, my question is about Drush Make, and um, first of all, it's a, I love it. It's awesome. Um, but when you decided to, you were talking about, um, you know, seeing uh, Open Atrium and, and wanting to do something for that. How was that an organic process to sort of come up with Drush Make? How was? Can you talk about that process of? Oh, we're gonna. I'm gonna make a sort of a build tool for Drupal now. Um, so the process was basically. I saw that Open Atrium, in Open Atrium, they basically checked all their modules into a repository, which is a really bad way to go about things because then any time one of them needed to be updated, they had to re-download it and check it back into the repository. So I thought, you know, that's dumb. Why don't we fix it? And I, so it, be, it started out like as, you know, 20 lines of PHP to go through all the modules and download the most recent versions. And sort of as I, you know, I, I sort of went along and tried to determine what their needs were. And that was sort of the first case that I was building for. And then from there, just see, yeah, you know, people contributed to, to me and to Drush Make, and they submitted their own patches, and that's how it grew and evolved. Yeah, I just wanted to know, um, what, what new developments in Drupal are making you excited at the moment? What, what's really awesome at the moment for you? Um, Drupal? So Drupal 8 is currently being worked on by people. Um, sorry, that was bad. All right, let me start over. Drupal 8's going to be really, really cool because it has all sorts of di really cool new changes that are really big and are going to completely fundamentally change the way you think about Drupal. Um, the, first of all, there's this thing, project called Whiskey, which is, stands for Web Services Core Context Initiative. And that's W-S-C-I-I, Whiskey. And what that will do is basically what you know as a block will sort of become awesomer and more powerful. And Dr all of Drupal will sort of turn into something panels-like except not quite even awesome or more powerful than that. And it's it's hard to explain. Um, but it's going to be really cool. And then also there's this thing called CMI, which is the Configuration Management Initiative. And what that is is basically uh, replacing features with something um, better that's more standardized and used by all of Core and hopefully all of Contrib. So, um, and then, you know, deployment's going to get fixed by that. That's also, those are the sort of the two big things that I'm looking forward to in Drupal 8, personally. It's going to be awesome. Do you remember what John Rissig asked you? <laughs> I don't. It might have been like, I didn't know, and he was there, and he was answering someone else's question, but I don't. <laughs> Sorry. It was a long time. That was like three, four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Uh, Bevan took my question, so I'll ask a different one. I'm just, just curious about, uh, could you recommend anything from your point of view for how education system, like your school or other schools, could support people contributing in, in this way? Um, I get the impression that a lot of schools are pretty clueless about software in general and open source in particular. Um, <laughs> he says in education. Um, I, that's a really good question. I don't know. I have to think about that. I mean, you know, the school has done, like, the, the pro, I took, I'm taking programming at school right now just because it's an easy class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not the teacher, but I, you know, I help all my friends in it. The great thing about it is that this class is self-paced, so I think, you know, that's really helpful. So I got through the curriculum in liter literally, like, two weeks. Um, and now I have the rest of the school year to you know play with cool programming things like I'm you know I learned Haskell and I'm learning Ruby and I, all these things that make me a better program. But I think so. I guess maybe something like that, like you know more self-paced learning. Um, the Khan Academy is really awesome in what they've been doing, but that's sort of at a slightly lower level. But it, I mean they could do it here. Um, but I don't know. That's something that requires a lot of thought. Good question. Uh, I was just wondering if you have any personal passion projects that you're working on at the moment that you'd like to share with us? Uh, Drupal related? Or? <laughs> uh, well, I, I've been sort of not so much in Drupal lately because I, I don't, because, you know, it's like second to last year of high school, like this is the year that colleges are like, okay, you need to get good grades now. Um, so I try to do most of the work for school. That takes up most of my time. Um, but I've been 
just what I think was really cool is all the new developments in Node.js. Sorry, not Drupal related, but close. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right. There is a module for that, and there's a session for that here, and probably today or tomorrow. Um, so you can go learn all about that. It's really cool. I think all the open source communities at some time go through the issues of inclusiveness. Having come through with what you believe is a period where you may have asked questions that were not of quality, <laughs> and you gave some very positive responses there, how do you feel are the general responses you received in the question of inclusiveness? And are you involved in other communities in open source? And do you believe the Drupal community is pretty close to the inclusiveness question? Um, well, I think that you know it started out people didn't know that I was 12, so I was just some random guy asking dumb questions. So I think in that sense, you know, it was more just people like me who wanted to help out, and you know, maybe didn't know the answer to the smart questions, but they knew the answer to the dumb questions. So I think in that, you know, it was pretty inclusive. And then I think I, mean, I don't have much other experience with other open source communities, but I think Drupal is, tends to be a very, very inclusive community. Especially since they've ha like we've had people like me come through who you know are, are special on the inclusiveness spectrum, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so you know having you know, for the community to have an experience of having someone like me, I think you know that's one way that that I've well, whatever you, you you know that we're asking questions right now. <laughs> um, Oh, now it's not going to turn off. <laughs> Whatever, you can look at the picture of... No, no, you can't. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> That's uh, Dmitry Shostakovich. Uh, no, different Dmitry. Um, I totally got sidetracked there. <laughs> okay, I was talking about con inclusiveness. Um, inclusiveness in, in open source is also a really big issue for a lot of communities, and a lot of communities struggle with that, as you said. Um, but yeah, I think it's something the Drupal community does really well. Uh, I think that was Chicago. Yeah, there have, there have been people who younger than me, and that makes me, you know, some people are like, oh, aren't you jealous, whatever. But I, <laughs> I, think it, I, I think it's great to have, you know, young people involved in Drupal. And, you know, there's no one uh, that I know of, like me, you know, keynoting places. But I really, you know, I think it's important to get people of all ages and all walks of life involved. And, yeah, it's, it's great. And I, there, there was, that's right, there was someone in Chicago. I, you're right, it was in San Francisco. Um, there was someone in San Francisco who you know, brought their kid, and their kid was learning to write patches, and I thought that was the coolest thing. And I think that was, they were probably like also nine or 10 years old. So if you all have kids that, that are nine or 10 years old, teach them to program and help make them, make them contribute to Drupal. Uh, we've still got a fair bit of time, so I have, I've given people here some chance to do questions. I think I need to probably run over there, and perhaps people over there. But I'm gonna cheat, because I've got the microphone. Um, we invited you, obviously, to come and keynote at Drupal Down Under, and thank you very much. It's awesome. Thank you for having me. Oh, awesome. It's amazing. But one of the things I wondered is, how do you, as a you know, veteran Drupal um, hacker as yourself, um, but of you know, so a useful complexion, how did you feel like being asked to you know, keynote on the other side of the world? Have you keynoted before? I haven't, and it's a really, you know, I think it's really cool. And it, it's actually really different from like just giving a normal technical talk because I have to like you know try to have something for everybody and I hope I did but um, some people laughed a fair amount that's good <laughs> there there we go so oh even <laughs> so you know but it was you know it's really amazing to be here and thank you so much for inviting me thank you for coming all right question any more questions put your hands up and I'll sort of there's one here you've already asked one Stuart hang on all right Stuart's first I don't know if you uh, noticed my daughter yesterday, but uh, how young is too young? <laughs> um, there is no too young. You know, start off with wearing the, the Drupal shirts. I think Bevan has a kid who can, you know, is a good role model there. Um, yeah, no, there is no too young. I mean, of course, like, talking is probably... A, important before <laughs> contributing. 
Log logical thinking is the important one, though. That's what really that's important. I've, I've got a 10-year-old, and he is very intelligent, but he, he just has a stigma associated with programming. And he actually said to me yesterday, I'm ashamed of you. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> how, how, do we how do you break that stigma for, for someone that young? I don't know. Programmers are cool. Like, we changed the world. You know, I don't know how much you've contributed to Drupal, because um, I can't see your name tag. But, uh, you know, like, Drupal's running, you know, the White House, and it's running the Prime Minister of Australia, and a million other websites. And <laughs> well, hey, you know, they're Lego Mindstorms. That's an awesome way to get started programming. That's how I got started programming. Um, I would highly recommend that for a 10-year-old. Programmers are cool. We change the world. I really like that. Yeah. Is there one over here? Saw, hand, no? Oh, I can say something oh. cool about programming, which is that, you know, or about Drupal, which is like being able to change things in Drupal. I, I forgot to say this earlier. Being able to change things in Drupal, you know, has also, also given me the value of like, you know, I can change something that runs on the White House's website. I can change the world. Um, and you all can too, and the 10 year old can too. So I, I think I spotted a um, big security hole in your patch. <laughs> um, and I'm just wondering if you saw it or if it got fixed or if it might still be there or it's not actually a security hole. Um, you call a function which, where the function name is defined by a query string parameter, profile. Um, Did you see that? Do you know about that? Yeah, I, that code no longer exists, I don't think. <laughs> the installer has been rewritten several times and again in Drupal 8, I think. Probably. Hopefully. Um, I don't know, Earl Miles reviewed my patch, so blame him. And, oh, and that part of it was still maintained. All I did was remove a dollar sign form equals. Any more questions? I have, I have my instrument. I'll play the Drupal song. All right, let's have the Drupal song. Dimitri Gaskin and his instrument. And if you know the words. <laughs> so... The Drupal song, how many people here know the Drupal song? Not so many. I can't sing the words and play this at the same time, so I'll have to just play this, and I'm really em embarrassed about my singing, so I'll play Erica, this. have you learned the words? Where are you? We played no. it, actually, at DrupalCon San Francisco, we played the Drupal song on stage before the keynote. That was pretty amazing. Um, or bef uh, before, like, the closing. Um, with Jeff Robbins, the author. So the Drupal song is a song written about Drupal. Um, and it talks about how awesome, uh, I don't know, I'll just play it. One sec. Ah, uh, ah, something happened. This is not good. <laughs> um, technical difficulties. Need some debugging. I guess I can't play it. I'm very sorry about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to hear. This makes me very sad. It's on you. Yes. You can find us playing it in San Francisco. I was playing my accordion there. It was pretty cool. Um, it's technically we've got another 10 or so minutes before morning tea is actually served. So I will one one more call. Who who has a question? Whatever. I know there's a some out there. We, we need some oh, there's uh, one over here. more intensive debugging. More intensive debugging for the... What is that thing? It's called a melodica. It's like the front half of an accordion, with the, except you blow into it. Very cool. Okay. Can I have a question? I was just wondering if you're going to have any time to look around Australia and enjoy being in another country. Um, unfortunately, not so much, because I have school, and I'm, leave yeah, I'm leaving and getting back on Monday. Thanks to the time change. Um, <laughs> I wish I could, though. Yeah, next time. Thank you so much, Dimitri. That was absolutely awesome. And I'm... Yes, thank you.